Okay, what I've got here uh, for us today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, engines and, and how engines work. Uh, and the best way to demonstrate uh, how the internal combustion engine works, uh, internal combustion meaning an engine where the explosion happens on the inside of the cylinder as opposed to uh, the fire or explosion happening on the outside like a steam engine with a fire in a firebox, is to use this antique because with the antique everything is exposed you can see all the moving parts and uh, as with uh, any antique it is a good example in a simplistic way of how the modern equivalent got started just a little overview of the engine for those of you that are familiar with it you probably see some things that you already recognize this is your cylinder your cylinder is located here and your cylinder has a piston in the hull which moves in and out you can see the piston moving quite easily here in this shot. Back and forth. That piston sliding in there has a complete seal and that will uh, seal up and compress the gases that go uh, that get sucked into the cylinder and that is where the explosion takes place. So the explosion takes place inside that cylinder and here this black box is the magneto. This is where your spark is generated. This linkage right here gets tripped Whenever, uh, whenever the engine is running. And I will try to demonstrate that for you here while we move the flywheel a little bit. You should be able to see the trips with a little ding. And that's generating a spark, which travels down this wire and leads to a relatively modern looking spark plug here. That spark plug goes into the cylinder and ignites the gas charge which then shoves the piston back in the cylinder shoving it back and powering the the flywheels around one of the things we ought to look at is the design of how that piston gets its movement to the flywheel this is a crank the crank is here uh, and you can see the crank quite well as I move it back and forth that crank which is moving this this is called the connecting rod this connecting rod right here connects the piston with the crank. And the crank moves quite easily. If I, uh, if I give the flywheel a little roll, you can see the crank coming out from underneath the cover. That crank transfers that back and forth motion into a rotational motion of the flywheel. So that's basically the physics of the engine and, and how the basic components are made. And uh, now what we need to look at is what we do for fuel. Down here on the front of the cylinder, as we can see, this little device here uh, was called at the time the fuel mixer. However, uh, the modern term for it would be carburetor. Uh, the carburetor, uh, what it does is it simply mixes uh, air and fuel together. Our fuel is in this tank down here. It is sucked up through this tube and into the carburetor where it is uh, measured by a needle valve. If I unscrew this wheel here, we can take a look at the needle valve. There's the needle valve there, and as you can see, it's called a needle valve because it has a point, and that point goes into a matching seat. Uh, and as I screw it in, it closes the fuel completely. And as I screw it out, it allows a pre-measured amount to come out, and I, and I measure that by screwing this needle valve out. Your air goes in here, and as it goes in and races up, races up that little fluting past this gasoline inlet, it sucks a mist or a spray of gasoline with it and sucks it into the cylinder. Here on the front we have an intake valve. This valve gets pulled in by the vacuum and that's what draws our gasoline in past that intake valve. Now the actual action that draws that fuel in happens back here and that is the, uh, the piston itself. I'll bring the, uh, the engine around here till we're where it would normally fire. Now, the engine has just fired uh, in, in, our, in our imagination. The explosion is, is coming back. The explosion comes back and the exhaust goes out and the exhaust valve closes. Now, the intake valve will come open when this pulls a vacuum. When that piston starts coming back, it pulls a vacuum and the intake valve will go. That little rattle you heard there was the intake valve coming back. Now the explosion happens, as I said. Let me go ahead and roll this engine through here again. Now the explosion has just happened. The power is coming back. 
And down here, we see there's this little rod. And that rod comes forward, presses on that lever. That lever gets pressed. And that's what operates our exhaust valve. And that's, uh, that's how the exhaust gets out. It has a matching valve on the other side. This one operated by a rocker. And that's how our exhaust uh, actually gets out of the cylinder after it's been uh, exploded. I think the best way to perhaps demonstrate this is to go ahead and turn on a little bit of gasoline. I'll turn on some gasoline here, open this valve up, and I'll close this air as to suck some gasoline out of the tank. And I grab hold of this with my hand and give it a hard crank. And it runs. Open up the air a little bit. And you can see everything sort of happening in unison here as the piston and, and crank travel round and round. Our exhaust valve arm here on the side, which moves back when it closes and forward when the exhaust valve opens, is also what actuates our magneto. Our magneto is operated by this little lever. The magneto, again, being the box that generates the spark through the wire and into the spark plug for us to uh, light our gasoline with. This engine is a 1926. It was made by Nelson Brothers in Saginaw, Michigan. And uh, was a very successful um, breed of engine during its time. And that's about it for this particular engine. We'll get some more footage of this as we explain the different components uh, of a gasoline engine, of an internal combustion engine, in a little bit greater detail. Uh, I look forward to it.